All right, so we've seen now a lot of the core functionality of the Gemini CLI, and we've used that to interact with our code base locally on this computer. But what if we want Gemini to interact with services or APIs outside of our local project? For example, our application might use a backend service like Superbase or Firebase or something else, and we might want Gemini to interact with that service as part of implementing a new feature like setting up a new data model or adding authentication or something. Well, by default, coding agents like Gemini or Cloud Code can't really do that, but we can use something called an MCP server to extend Gemini's capabilities to interact with those external services and APIs. Now, this is not going to be a deep dive into the architecture of MCP servers and how they work under the hood, but I do want to give you a brief overview so that you know what's going on from kind of a bird's eye perspective. So MCP stands for Model Context Protocol, and it's a protocol that was put into place by Anthropic, who created Claude Code and all the Claude models. And they made this protocol as a way for AI clients like the Gemini CLI and therefore the AI model itself to interact with external services and data sources. So let's say, for example, we have a Firebase backend, right? And we want Gemini to interact with that backend service to help build out the application. Well, to do that, we can add the Firebase MCP server to the Gemini CLI. And when we do that, the MCP server exposes a bunch of extra tools that Gemini can trigger and tell the MCP server to run them. Now, those tools defined in the MCP server and exposed to the Gemini CLI are basically just functions that when triggered, run some code and send requests to the Firebase service. It then takes the response and hands that back to Gemini. For example, the Firebase MCP server exposes a tool called Firebase List Projects, which reaches out to Firebase and returns all the projects that you have for your account. So if we ask the Gemini CLI to do something which requires it to know about our Firebase projects, then it can trigger this tool to reach out to Firebase, grab our projects and return them to the Gemini CLI. And then in turn, the AI model can decide what to do next based on that response. And the important thing to understand is that it's not the AI model itself reaching out to those external services. It doesn't know how to interact with them. It only knows the tools provided as context by the MCP server that we add, and then it can request those tools to be run by the MCP server. Now, this is an oversimplification, but it's enough of a mental model to get started. But anyway, let's try adding an MCP server to the Gemini CLI. Now, in this lesson, we're going to be adding the official MCP server for a service called Context7, which is a huge collection of the most recent and up-to-date docs of loads of frameworks and libraries like Next, Nuxt, React, Vue, Tailwind, you name it. And the MCP server for this exposes tools to get and search those docs for whatever framework we're interested in. And this is good because if we're implementing a new framework or new feature from a framework, then we can tell Gemini to use the Context7 MCP server to find out the latest official guidance on how to implement it. Because without doing so, then the AI model could occasionally use old and sometimes outdated approaches based on the training data it's been fed and its cutoff point. So by using something like Context7 in our development workflow with a coding agent, we can be more confident, I guess, in the code it produces being up to date and correct. Now, to use the Context7 MCP server, you'll need to sign up for a free account at context7.com and then generate a free API key. And you can do that by coming to your dashboard and then scrolling down until you see the Create API Key button. So just click on that, give your key a name, and then copy the key once it's been generated because you'll be needing that later on. In fact, you might want to paste it in Notepad or something else for now because we'll be copying another snippet of code in a moment as well. So we have the API key and next we need to add the Context7 MCP server to the Gemini CLI to use it. To see how to do that, we can head to the Context7 install guide by clicking on this link up here, which opens the GitHub repo for the MCP server. Now, if we scroll down the page a bit, we're going to see options for different clients like Cursor, Claude Code, Client, etc. And if you keep on scrolling, you will eventually come to the Gemini CLI option, which we need to expand. And when we do that, we're going to see a snippet of code that we need to copy. Now, there's actually two options here, adding a remote server or a local one. And where possible, I use the remote option. So I'm going to highlight all of this bit of code here, except the surrounding curly braces and copy that. Okay, so back in VS Code then, we need to register this MCP server so that Gemini knows about it. And to do that, we can open the settings.json file and just add it right here. So inside this settings object, I'm gonna paste in the snippet of code I copied from the context seven docs. And this registers this context seven MCP server 
for this project and any other MCP servers we add to this project would be configured like this inside this same MCP servers property. And again, those MCP servers would be registered and available to only this project. Now you can add MCP servers globally to the Gemini CLI and you would do that in the global settings file using the same MCP servers property like this. But for this series, we're gonna be adding this MCP server to just this project. Anyway, if you take a look at this server configuration, you can see that we've got the URL to reach the server. And then down here, we've got some headers and we need to supply an API key right here, which is what we got before from the Context7 website. Now, instead of adding the API key here directly where it might accidentally get pushed to a public repo, we can keep it inside a .env file instead. And then Gemini CLI allows us to reference those variables inside this settings file. So let's start by making a .env file first in the root of the project. And then inside this file, I'm gonna make a new environment variable called context7, all caps, and then underscore API, underscore key. And then we need to set that equal to the API key we got from the context7 website, which I'm gonna copy from my other screen right now so that I can paste it back in over here. So now let's save this file and head back to the settings.json file where we can reference this variable. And we can do that by coming to this value right here and then replacing it with dollar sign curly braces. And then inside that, the name of the variable, which was all uppercase context seven underscore API underscore key. And importantly, this stays inside the double quotes. So then, now we've added the server, we can start using it by coming to the Gemini CLI and first of all, quitting the current session by using the quit command. Then we can start a new one by typing Gemini in the terminal and hitting enter. And I'm doing this because a lot of the time when you add a new server or new configuration, Gemini doesn't always pick up on that until you start another session. Anyway, now we've done that, we can run the MCP command to verify the MCP server was added because this command lists all the MCP servers it finds for the project. And you can see that now we have this context seven server, which comes with a couple of tools to get a library ID and then to actually get the docs for a library. Now, when we're chatting with Gemini, if we want to check context seven for any docs, we don't have to explicitly tell it to use any specific tools because these tools provide enough context to the model so that it automatically knows which ones to call when it needs to. So I could just use a prompt like this, which I'm gonna paste in and that says, use context seven to check. I've set up VTest correctly for a Nuxt app in the VTest config file, all right? Then I'm gonna manually add that config file by typing the at symbol and searching for vtest and then selecting it. And if I hit enter, we should see that at some point, the Gemini CLI asks us for permission to run a tool from the context seven MCP server. And there it is, allow execution of MCP tool resolve library ID from server context seven. So I'm just gonna say yes, and I'll say always allow this tool and press enter. And then now it wants to run the other tool, get library docs. So again, I'm gonna say yes and always allow that tool. Okay, so now it's done and it says yes, your vtest.config.ts is correctly set up for a Nuxt application. It verified this against the official Nuxt testing documentation and checked the project structure. All right, cool. So that's all done now. And again, anytime I wanted to check the docs for something, or I wanted Gemini to check the docs for something before it implements a feature, I can just ask it to use context seven. Okay, so that's how we add an MCP server. And in the case of this context seven one, something I normally do is add an instruction to my Gemini file, telling Gemini to use the docs from context seven whenever it adds a new framework specific feature. And that way I don't have to manually ask it to do that every time I'm sending a prompt. Now, sometimes it might skip that step and in which case you can manually tell it to do so, but generally it follows those instructions. All right, so we've seen now how to use MCP servers with the Gemini CLI. And next I wanna show you how Gemini CLI extensions work. So I'm on the Gemini CLI website and up here you can see a link to the extensions page. And when we click on that, we're gonna see a list of all the extensions available to us that we can install. 
Now, these extensions are something unique to the Gemini CLI, and they're basically small packages which can include MCP server configurations like we just saw, a context, normally in the form of markdown files and custom commands. And sometimes an extension can be just one of these things, and sometimes it can be a combination of all of them. It depends on the extension. For example, the context 7 extension is just an MCP server. And adding this extension to the Gemini CLI would essentially just set the context 7 server up in the global settings file, whereas we manually added the server to just a single project. I'm going to come off this one and instead I'm going to search for an extension up here, which is the Firebase one. And you can see this extension includes an MCP server setup as well as some context files. It also includes some custom commands, but they're not shown here. Anyway, this extension's going to let us communicate with a Firebase backend, set up a new Firebase project, hook it up with our front end and so forth. To install it, we just need to copy this command right here, which starts with Gemini extensions install followed by the URL of the extension. And that's how all extensions are generally installed. So let's copy this command and then head back to VS Code. All right then, so what I'm gonna do is quit out of the current session right here because I'm gonna run this directly in the terminal. And that's what we do. I mean, you can use shell mode if you want to inside Gemini, but I've come out of the chat session now and I'm just gonna paste in the install command right here and I will run it by pressing enter. It's only gonna take a few seconds to do and then hopefully we'll get a confirmation message. Actually, I still need to confirm this down here by pressing enter on the default yes value. And now it says extension Firebase was installed and successfully enabled. Now extensions are generally installed globally in your home directory inside that .gemini folder. So you can see now we have an extensions folder which is where they get installed and we have this Firebase folder as well which contains everything for that Firebase extension including a markdown file right here as well and we have a readme, a license, etc. So everything to do with this extension lives inside this folder, but now what it does is extend Gemini with the Firebase MCP server, so it set that up for us globally, and also some commands that we can use as well. Okay, so back inside the project, we could start using the Firebase extension to communicate with Firebase via the MCP it's added and the custom commands it gave to us. So I've already spun up a new chat session in Gemini, and now I'm going to type a forward slash followed by Firebase to see if we can see any of these new commands. And you can see a few of them right here. They all start with Firebase, then a colon, and then after that, we've got deploy, init, or consult. So consult is for consulting with a Firebase assistant and the most up-to-date Firebase docs. Deploy is for deploying different resources to Firebase. And init is for initializing services on the Firebase backend, like maybe a database, and then setting that up in the front-end application as well. Now, I'm not going to run through an example of these commands because it will take a while. And I'm aware this lesson is already getting quite long. But I did want to show you how to install these extensions into the Gemini CLI. Also, in the next session, we will be installing and using this time another extension, the Nano Banana one.